water is life. Water is a major constituent of all living matter on the earth. But when the rains fail, there is a scarcity of water all around. In some parts of the country, there is continuous drought, whereas in some others, there are floods. Why is it so? There is something wrong somewhere, which results in suffering for all. Let us see how we waste water. Most of our water storage, use and conveyance methods are wasteful. Our canals waste a lot of precious water by seepage through their earthen beds and banks, which results in development of saline and alkaline soils. Continuous sufferings have made us realize that water is precious. We must therefore store it, conserve it, and use it judiciously. Nature gives us plenty of water through the melting of snows and rains. But we are not good managers. We use only 10% of it. The rest goes down to the sea. Water is one of the most important inputs for crop production. It influences all the normal growth processes of plants. For optimum growth of plants and efficient use of water, we must know when to irrigate, how much to irrigate, and how best to irrigate. Rain provides surface water sources for irrigation in many forms, lakes, rivers, tanks, ponds, etc. Runoff water stored here can be regulated for irrigation through suitable conveyance systems. A part of rainwater percolates below the water table and adds to the groundwater reservoir. Free-flowing fountains, like artesian wells, are an outlet for excess water stored underground. Tube wells also draw water from underground sources. Dug wells store most of the groundwater which can be lifted for irrigation using electric or diesel pumps. Other popular methods of drawing water for irrigation are the Persian wheel, the use of buckets and the mechanical energy generated by a windmill. The windmill utilizes the natural power of wind to lift water. When the wind blows, it rotates the vane wheel, which works the pump, and water is lifted up and discharged. Its capacity depends on wind velocity and frequency. Let us see how water is wasted. Most of our water conveyance methods are wasteful. Conveying water from one place to another through unlined earth channels results in a loss of around 50%, depending on the soil. Therefore, there is a great need for conserving water during conveyance. This loss can be minimized by constructing these channels with stable side slopes and with banks strong enough to carry the required flow of water safely. A small farmer can also go in for prefabricated pipes or channels for carrying water from the well to the field and thus conserve water for irrigation. 
he must ensure that there is no leakage at joints. Brick, stone or concrete masonry are commonly used for lining irrigation channels. Single layer bricks or stones laid in cement or lime mortar provide virtually waterproof channel lining. Precast structures can prove to be very useful while constructing water channels. Weeds around the lined channels take away part of the water meant for irrigating crops. Remove them as soon as they appear. Lining the channels with precast slabs, but not covering the joints is a waste of money and effort, as the irrigation water will seep through the open joints, resulting in wastage of water. The joints must be cemented at the time of construction of the channel. If the channel has been in use for some time, a watch should be kept to locate broken joints and the same should be cemented immediately. We are at the hydraulic laboratory of the Water and Land Management Institute in Aurangabad, where different methods of water conveyance are demonstrated. Let's have a look at them. These are the rectangular conveyance channels most commonly in use. The shape of the channel may differ depending on the purpose for which the channel is to convey water. Wider channels will, however, lose more water by evaporation. The quantity of water can be calculated by passing it through the narrower area of a fixed opening called a flume, made of concrete, steel or timber, and by using a ready-made formula. Using triangular check structures for passing irrigation water is another method of measuring the quantity of water flowing through the channel. In the entire irrigation system layout, diversion channels, sluice gates, check gates, pipe down spillways and other control and diversion structures now made of much stronger material play an important part. These may appear to be expensive, but in the long run they prove to be very economical. Taking water from one place to another through pipes saves it from evaporation and seepage. And if the pipe runs underground, the farmer gets more space for growing crops. The pipes can cross the surface channel without interfering with it. The water thus carried can be stored in some conventional place like a tank for use in the field as and when required. Irrigation water can also be carried over the ground without disturbing the field under it. This is a temporary structure, but a permanent structure like this, or at a little greater height, can be useful. The initial cost of such structures is high, but if the cost of land saved for cultivation and other advantages are taken into consideration, it will prove to be very economical. But there will be no economy in such structures if we permit leakages from pipe joints. These leakages should never be permitted if we are to take advantage of this costly water conveyance method. The ground in its natural state is seldom suited for efficient application of water. Land grading means reshaping the field to a planned grade so that flow of water can be controlled to check soil erosion and provide surface drainage to the field. You are seeing a buck scraper cutting the earth from high patches and depositing it in low patches. This operation is continued Till the desired finish is obtained. Land grading gives great benefits to irrigated areas. A properly graded land surface ensures an unobstructed and smooth flow of water into the land, 
without eroding the soil and helps in the uniform distribution of water throughout the field. Due to ploughing and other normal cultivation operations, the smoothness of a graded or leveled field is disturbed. High and low patches develop in some places. Proper shaping of the field can be done by minimal earth movement. This can be done by a bullock-drawn plough or harrow. When irrigation water is released in the field, it should move forward as well as downward. A tractor can also do the job very efficiently. If the field does not have proper smooth shape and has high and low patches, the forward movement of water is restricted. More water accumulates in lower patches and water may not reach the higher patches. As a result, crop growth is not uniform. To overcome these drawbacks, land shaping becomes necessary. The land which was earlier not fit for growing crops has now been graded, leveled and shaped for efficient irrigation. The water requirements of different crops vary widely depending on the type of soil. In India, the soils are broadly classified into several groups. The important ones are alluvial soils, laterite or lateritic soils, red soils and black soils. The depth of soil is also important from the point of view of water requirement of different crops. A soil profile will enable the farmer to find out what is there under the topsoil where the roots of the plants will spread. For surface irrigation of fields, different methods are adopted. Check Basin Irrigation is the most common method used in India. The field is divided into smaller unit areas. Buns or ridges are constructed around the areas, forming basins, within which irrigation water can be controlled. The basins are filled to the desired depth, and the water is retained until it infiltrates into the soil. Furrow irrigation is used for all cultivated crops planted in rows like maize, sorghum, sugarcane, cotton, tobacco and groundnut. The most popular method of irrigation is border irrigation. The field is divided into a number of long parallel strips called borders that are separated by low ridges. Siphon tubes are useful in conveying water over the channel banks into the field. The central feature of border irrigation is to provide an even surface over which the water can flow down the slope with an almost uniform depth. Each strip is irrigated independently. In the sprinkler method of irrigation, water is sprayed into the air and allowed to fall on the ground in a manner resembling rainfall. The spray is produced by the flow of water under pressure through small orifices or nozzles. All the sprinkler irrigation equipment is quite light and easy to carry from one place to another. Assembling the equipment is also simple. Sprinkler irrigation can be used for almost all the crops except rice and jute. By selecting the right size of nozzle, maintaining the desired operating pressure and keeping proper spacing between sprinklers, the crop will receive efficient and uniform irrigation which will suit the infiltration rate of the soil. Drip irrigation is one of the latest methods of irrigation. 
In this method, the water is applied to precisely the root zone. The plants are thus watered frequently with a volume of water appropriate to the level of their consumption. Conventional losses, as by deep percolation, runoff and evaporation are thus avoided. The system applies water slowly to keep the soil moisture within the desired range for plant growth. Crops like banana, grapes, papaya, guava and other fruit trees and vegetables respond well to drip irrigation. Experiments are in progress to use ordinary plastic tubes for drip irrigation which will further reduce the cost of having this system in your field. In the areas of water scarcity, plants can be irrigated by placing water in earthen pots. The water percolates to the roots of the plant. The water requirement of plants varies with the stage of their growth. And this requirement varies from plant to plant. Generally, the plant needs less water when it is young and when it is shooting booting and earring, its water need increases. As it approaches maturity, it does not need as much water for further growth. Rainwater is a boon to agriculture. It has to be managed properly. It should be managed where it falls and followed along its flow. Soil erosion caused by runoff water from cultivated fields should be avoided at all costs. For making maximum use of rainwater, it is best to grow crops during the rainy season. This also provides plant cover to protect the soil against erosion. Rainwater gets collected in percolation wells, tanks, farm ponds and check dams. It should be conserved in its place of storage and used judiciously. In some catchment areas of dams, cetyl alcohol is sprayed over the water surface to reduce loss by evaporation, thus conserving water for irrigation. In some other places, loss by evaporation is reduced by shifting water from smaller places to a bigger and deeper reservoir, thus reducing the area of evaporation. The harvested water is recycled for use in agriculture. Sources of irrigation water in our country are limited. The water should therefore be used most judiciously. Conserving water for irrigation is of utmost importance to the farmer and the country. The water thus saved will help in irrigating many more hectares of land giving additional crop yields, leading to the prosperity of the farmer, his family, and the country. <laughs>